Okay, like right now, for example, the Hadians need to come to America. But some people are all, what about the strain on our resources? But it's like, when I had this garden party for my father's birthday, right? I said RSVP because it was a sit down dinner. But people came that like did not RSVP. So I was like totally bugging. I had to haul ass to the kitchen, redistribute the food, squish in extra place settings. But by the end of the day, it was like the more the merrier. And so if the government could just get to the kitchen, rearrange some things, we could certainly party with the Hadians. Mr. Hall, how can I answer that? The topic is Haiti and she's talking about some little party. Hello, it was his 50th birthday. Whatever. If she doesn't do the assignment, I can't do mine. Hey everyone, welcome to The Boot. That's right, it's The Boot. We're casting classic movie reboots, so Hollywood doesn't have to. They don't even have to. They don't have to. Just give it to us. Yeah. We'll, we'll do all the work for you. Yeah. Don't put any work in. Don't pay anybody else to do it. We'll do it for free. I'm Brian Flynn. I'm here with Kenna Trent. Kenna, how are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing pretty good. You're doing good? I'm glad to see that you're okay. I'm okay. The last time I saw you, you were... I have to go to the gym because I ate five peanut M&Ms. Outrageous. A stick of licorice. What does she Ugh. eat? Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember Cher's <laughs> breakfast that day? I remember five five M and M's is like a big deal. I had two bowls of special K, three pieces of turkey bacon, a handful of popcorn, five peanut butter M and M's, and like three pieces of licorice. <gasps> All right, so welcome back. If you are listening, you probably heard a little clip at the top. Uh, this month's movie is not this month. This episode's yeah movie is the classic Clueless, probably. One of my favorite 90s movies about L.A. in the 90s. That's you know very I mean? specific. I was right. about to say, if you were just going to say 90s movies. one of my favorite, I was like, wow, that is I shocking mean, it's up there. and exciting. 90s movies about Los Angeles in the 90s. So, mm. Friday. Okay. Falling Down. <laughs> okay. Clueless. Heat? Mm, not really about L.A. Exactly. You know what I mean? fit the same bill but that's okay that's okay all right well before we get into it we have some reboot news oh the hottest the reboot hottest news. news paramount players posts what men want empires taraji p henson to star the new version follows a female sports agent henson who has been constantly boxed out by her male colleagues when she gains the power to hear men's thoughts she's able to shift the paradigm to her advantage as she races to sign the nba's next superstar first of all great copy on this did you notice boxed out by her male colleagues really that's really some clever. good that's some really, really good clever. copy right there what it's do we beautiful. think about this i will say that i when i read about this i went back and watched the trailer for what women want the, the mel gibson mel gibson helen, uh, hunt helen hunt movie that this is a take on and it is this makes so much sense to me taraji yeah. p henson in the sports world lots of feminist women issues yeah. to discuss and explore here. What women want is baffling. I can hear what women think. Whoa, lighten up that aftershave, buddy. I'm talking personal, private stuff. The stuff that nobody on earth is supposed to hear. I hear that stuff. It's driving me crazy. Even French poodles, I can hear them. Monsieur, I need to poo-poo. <laughs> and it is, I mean, number one, they're billing Mel Gibson as... A rom com, like he's he's the Matthew McConaughey of the movie, but he is no Matthew McConaughey. No, I'll say what's believable is um, I believe Mel Gibson hears voices. <laughs> I believe that. That's one hundred percent true. Other than that, feels a little like a <sighs> departure that he's using it like that's power for the good of women kind or. Especially you know what I mean? because all the all the like bits that they put in the trailer are like Helen Hunt like looking at his crotch and being like, oh my gosh, I just looked at his crotch. <laughs> I know, she's, I haven't seen that movie probably if ever, but I remember, <laughs> I remember what you're talking about, but she's, yes. she's like very like reserved, yeah. right? She's like a businesswoman. Right. Who's doing business with Mel Gibson, I guess. I, I don't remember ever seeing this movie, but that's the impression I got. From the trailer. Um, probably not a movie that ages well. Well, I will see this because 
it's it's an insane premise. Yeah. Um, and maybe it'll have sports in it, so <laughs> maybe it'll have something. Your bar is just right. set. I'm so... assuming like Blake Griffin's gonna show up. Oh, one hundred percent. All the like some NBA pseudo stars. Steph Curry might, you know, sports actors. Yeah. I mean, considering the number of basketball players that have been in movies in the past five years, why has there not been a Space Jam? I thought Reboot. they were trying, either with I, LeBron I, James or Blake Griffin. I feel like that was a that was one of those like rumors that someone made a fake poster for. Well, it's then... probably because they have to reteach people the skill of hand drawn animation. It's been years since Looney Tunes back in action, right? So. People are not ready for it. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, we do have a few rules that we try to abide by. I feel like this is going to go away real quickly, but, you know, I like that we start with standards. And practices. Yeah. Right. I like that. S&Ps. You know, nobody else is going to do it. So, the first one is we don't want to do movies with any remakes, reboots, or, or long lost sequels. So, anything that has already been redone in the past 20 years or, you know, like, a Star Wars franchise where something just pops up every 10 years. We'll try to avoid that. Um, but who knows? Um, the second rule. We know. <laughs> kind of we know. Because we control right. this I podcast. Should, I should really take more ownership <laughs> over what we're doing. We specifically will know. <laughs> Number two, there's no imaginary casting. Like, you can't cast Marilyn Monroe in anything. It has to be someone who's alive, alive and currently. working yeah. right now. These are... These are Remakes for today's audiences, for yeah. today's climate. Yeah. It has to be able to be made. And, and who knows? It might. It, I don't want to promise anything, but... Do you know how much money we're going to lose by putting all of this out? <laughs> <laughs> like, every one of these movies. We should just, like, rewrite... The, we should just, yeah. you know, but whatever. Bob Iger's just going to be like, give me all of these movies. <laughs> and he can. He can now. He owns everything. Um, and the last one is no casting based just on how somebody looks, which I feel like maybe I did this this time because that's really difficult. But wait, what? Say that again. No casting just based on how somebody looks. You have to right. be able to av- vouch for their acting prowess. Yes, or lack thereof. With that in mind, let's get started. Let's, let's go. Let's, let's dive go. In. Hi, how old are you? I'll be sixteen in May. My birthday is in April, and as someone older, can I please give you some advice? It is one thing to spark up a doobie and get laced at parties, but it is quite another to be fried all day. Do you see the distinction? Yeah. Okay, Clueless came out in 1995. I'm a little bit older than you. I don't remember seeing this movie in theater. This movie, to me, was a blockbuster video, home run. Yeah. I may or may not have dubbed it. On that, you know, not dub. What do you? What is it uh, when you have like one VCR and another VCR? Oh, like you recorded. Yeah, like you play yeah. it on one VCR and then you're like recording it on another video. What if I said, "What's a VCR?" <laughs> would that blow your mind? I would take this cord and wrap it around my neck. <laughs> just kidding. I know what a VCR is. And just be like, "Where did my days go?" Um, the movie Clue stars Alicia Silverstone, Paul Rudd, Stacey Dash, Brittany Murphy, to name a few. To name the. To name the, the big hitters, the, big the hitters. heavy hitters. Alicia Silverstone was 20 when this movie came out. Brittany Murphy was 18. Paul Rudd and Stacey Dash were kind of the seniors here. Paul Rudd was immortal. Like It says 26, but but we know. Yeah. <laughs> we know, know he really <laughs> stopped aging at 20 and he's Dorian Gray. Live he's like forever. real life Dorian Gray. <laughs> if Dorian Gray was just like an affable, lovable. You were saying something about Paul Rudd. Okay. When we brought this up, when we talked about having just Listen. watched this, I want you to t- tell Listen. the audience. So I know lots of people are going to disagree with this, but I have never been attracted to Paul Rudd before. And I know he's he's a he's a pretty guy. He's a real adorable, lovable guy. But I've just never looked at him that way. And for some reason, during this watch of Clueless, I think it's specifically the part where like. Uh, he's like working on Cher's dad's case and they're like hanging out and he's like sort of like eyeing her. They're highlighting. Just a little weird. Just a little weird. <laughs> and uh, her her dad like looks at him and is sort of like, <laughs> and he just like flashes a smile that was so adorable. I was like, wow. You finally got you. Yeah. Let me say this. Paul Rudd is like one of five men I immediately would change lives with. I think Paul Rudd is the most beautiful human on earth. (laughs) 
from really? day one. The most beautiful Well, first human. of all, okay, so he shows up in Clueless, and then, like, yada, 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 he's, like, in every movie. Yeah. He's, like, a comedy mainstay. I gotta look up his IMDb, because... It's insane. Have you looked at it? Because I feel like there's a bunch of um, small indie movies that he's done. And really, to anybody... get to like basically like Ant Man, forty year old virgin. Yeah. Knock... Is he not? He is a knocked up anchor man. Anybody who can make that jump from stuff like Anchor Man and like Knocked Up into like a Marvel movie. How dare I forget what Hot American Summer? Oh. How Whoa, dare? How I? dare you? How dare I? I I also forgot, but that is where it's at. So Clueless is a ninety five. First thing on Paul Red's real kind of credits is a TV series in 94. Clueless, I think, was his first major movie. And this says, IMDb says, he was in Romeo and Juliet? Oh, the Romeo plus Juliet, the one with um, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Yeah, the Baz Luhrmann. Dave Paris. Dave. <laughs> Dave <laughs> Paris. What a role. <laughs> 200, okay, so 200 cigarettes, yeah. I don't remember him in Cider House Rules. I don't. But I believe it. I don't remember him in Gen X Cops 2 Metal Mayhem. Oh, you but don't? I think I need to watch that immediately. Um, friends. I forget. I yeah. Was, friends. <clears throat> I was so happy. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Friends. That he and Phoebe end up together. That really made my heart sore. And then it goes straight to Anchorman. Fascinating. All like, right. he, j- he blew up in the early 2000s. He blew up. Oh, shout out to the Baxter. I love that movie. Oh, I've never seen that. You should you should check it out. Night at the Museum. Okay, so we gotta we gotta okay. move on. Okay. <laughs> this ain't a Paul Rudd uh, podcast. <laughs> this is a remake podcast. No, but he's beautiful, and I <laughs> yeah. I, I just now realized it. Yeah. In his like '90s college yeah. guy. Sort um, of way. he was 26 in this movie. Stacy Dash was 28. Shocking. Shocking. She looks phenomenal. She does. That's all I'm going to say about Stacey Dash. <laughs> Stacey Dash. Yeah, let's leave, let's leave Stacey Dash <laughs> all right. alone. Do you, do you want to go first? Should I go first? Um, I can go first. You want to go first? Okay. I feel, I feel pretty, pretty strongly so, about uh, my choice for Cher. So these are the characters I believe we agreed on. Cher, yeah. Dion, Ty, Josh, and Mel, the father. Why don't you start? Okay, so my pick for Cher, because I feel like I'm not entirely sure I think this this person is a great actress, but I feel like Part of Cher's appeal is that she's a fashion icon. And this person is already a fashion icon in her own right. So <laughs> oh. you're, you're looking you at me look at my very list? skeptically. Did you look at my list? It's Zendaya. We're we're really close on this. Really? Yeah. I think, because, okay, I saw The Greatest Showman. I didn't want to. And I regret doing it. But. First of all, isn't it Zendaya? Is it Zendaya? Zendaya. Brian. Well, I just want to get her name right. It's one name. We have to get it right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's not easy. Imagine like, like she is too, that we can kind of mumble one and then be like, Johnson. Is it? Wait, what is it? Zen- Zendaya? I thought it was Zendaya. Zendaya. But you say Zendaya. Zendaya. Judges? Zendaya. Zendaya. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, well, that was my choice for Cher. And I feel like part of that, like, I, I can't say that I love her work. As I an can. actor, I think she's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Um, especially the sort mm-hmm. of like quirkiness that I think she brought to Spider-Man: Homecoming. Mm-hmm. But mostly, she just is like a supermodel walking around all yeah. the time, and she's gorgeous, and she always dresses impeccably. Right. And I think that kind of energy works for Cher. I agree. I'm going to say this: Zendaya might pop up again. Oh. I actually worked on Spider-Man Homecoming. I, however, oh, missed... Uh, yeah, oh, I'll drop a little, a little <laughs> Do you want to drop, drop some names? A little credit drop. Do you know? uh, oh, yeah. For those of you who are just like, Ken and I, we work in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> we might work in the industry. So peripherally. <laughs> so, so very peripheral. So outside. This, but like, this opportunity, I got to be like, wow, I'm in the big dance here. But yeah. I, I missed all of her shoot because I, I got hired very late. Mm. And I missed... Every day she was on set. Mm. It was it was quite a so small no amount, considering I feel like she brought a lot to, to yeah, the movie. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen the movie, like she plays a very small role that is meant to become a bigger role. Yes. In the seven other ones that they're probably going to make. Sure. But, um. Okay. I went with 
Elle Fanning. Interesting. And I'm gonna say this: um, the the three women I picked for Cher, Dion, and Ty. Mm-hmm. I feel like I could just spin on a wheel. I agree. And be like, all of you are so talented uh, that you could, any one of you could knock these different roles out of the park. I did. I found myself sort of just coming <clears throat> up with a like a bullpen of just really young, super it girls. Yeah. And just sort of assigning them parts. Yeah. Because at a certain point, I was like, you know what? Anybody could be any of these things. I just realized that I probably cast it a little traditionally to like, I broke the rule, I think, a little more on look. But I, I think Elle Fanning mm. has a, a movie star error to her that I think Cher has in that high school. That she, she kind of becomes like a more grounded person and a more selfless person. Mm-hmm. I think Elle Fanning could do that pretty well. I well, think, again... Any of my three that right. I have here could do that. I think it's just a matter of like, if you were to, again, here's another rule. We're not talking about the story of how no. this would change. No, but I'm, I'm sure we have notes yeah, about uh, that. But um, Hollywood, are you paying attention? <laughs> again, we are industry people. <laughs> Hire us. So that was, that was my pick. Um, no, I think that's really, it's really interesting because she definitely has a more... Like, Alicia Silverstone looks like your, like, typical blonde, yeah. hot 90s girl. And Elle Fanning is way more like it's 2018. Yeah. And I'm, she's the look of an it girl. I'm going to go to my Dion because okay. I think in tandem I can explain it a little better. Okay. For Dion, I picked Zendaya. Again, a, did, I know. Second episode. How, of, did we di- how did we get here? I don't know. <laughs> but this is why. I think Dion's character has maybe more f- funnier moments. That I would, hmm. I would rather Zendaya have. Okay. I do think Dion's relationship with Murray is an overtly comedic thing that Cher just needs to be slightly more subtle. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting to think, I think, of Zendaya. T- I'm forgetting in my head don't immediately worry about it. <laughs> uh, how to say her name. I don't know if I see her as like a more broad comedic person. I'm not saying she is. I'm just saying she can handle it. Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, has they, Elle Fanning ever been in a comedy? I, it's like she she's doing all these like weird art house movies now. Yeah, she does it. indies. I would I would love to see it. Yeah. Um, to Elle just Fanning, give her a shot. I believe Elle Fanning is 19, so kind of near oh, wow. that Alicia Silverstone yeah. age. And Zendaya is 21, so she's like way younger. But like, who who cares? Um, who's your Dion? I had thoughts about Dion and I picked an actress that I liked but I switched it actually today because I was going over my picks and I was like you know I don't want to know who you switched it from I just okay. all I want okay. to know, know that because thinking about 2018 Clueless I was like I imagine Cher's best friend would be her gay best friend mm. and I've been watching You're way more progressive on I've been this one. <laughs> I, I knew I was gonna I, I knew I was just like oh I'm not I've been watching a lot of search party and so I am mm-hmm. was like could not stop picturing like a John Early as Elliot I didn't pick John Early but that's the kind of character right. that I was like this would be Cher's best friend mm-hmm. in like 2018 Clueless so instead I picked an actor his name's Alex Newell who I know from Glee and oh, yeah. maybe nothing else but who I think could sort of bring a mixture of like Elliot from Search Party and maybe like Titus Andromedon from Kimmy Schmidt. I see it. And I wanted that to be the gay best friend mm-hmm. version of Dion. That's really funny because I, I just remember that the, there, there's like a whole storyline in Clueless <laughs> where she falls in love with the new kid. Yeah. And she's so oblivious that Christian. he's gay. Christian, yeah. That could not happen today. I don't know. It depends though because... Unless, like, he doesn't know, right? Yeah. No, you're right. Like, there would be somebody in her life. Today, I feel like we just would not. Yeah. But it was also such a specific, like, mid-90s fashion thing of taking it back to, like, calling people, like, cats. And, yeah, it was very Like, taking suit. it back to sort of, like, that. Is that, like, rockabilly like, or, like... It was, like... No, it was, like, swing. Yeah, like, that was a thing, and so there was just something about that that works so perfectly. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's a pretty guy, but. Also, his, like, origin is very, is just doesn't, he isn't just explained. Appears. He just, like, appears. Yeah. And he has all this money. He looks like he's 40. He drives, like, this beautiful car. 
and he he like is there like I'm a- assuming he he was like 17 he was playing like a 17 year old high schooler 18 year old high schooler who just like stays out all night and then was like she's like I'm like really tired I'm gonna go home he's like oh for real I the band he's like <laughs> three guys there you know this after party I'm going to go hang with them assumingly forever do you think there's a separate movie within this movie about Christian being a Russian an, spy, <laughs> an undercover <laughs> high school student? It's like season ten of The Americans. Like <laughs> they make it to the nineties. <laughs> they make it to the nineties and they move to Los Angeles. <laughs> They'd have to infiltrate the the high school kid's life, get to know the popular oh, girl, and then like. Oh. The scene where he saves Ty from those guys who oh, throw that is her so over great. the wall. Oh, that is so great. We're just joking. Right? Oh, really? I found myself because I hadn't seen it in so long, being like, "What?" It was a, it's they a almost great... throw her. They're like yeah. holding her over. What mall is that? I don't know. Is it the Westfield Mall? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I I really loved it. I Women really like loved danger. the scene of he just gets so. No, well he he's in the right. What I'm yeah. what I'm confused is these two guys Why are flirting with a girl that? and they're like, "Here's a great pickup. Let's pick you up by your feet and dangle you over a third story railing well, in this, this was, mall." This was this was pre Michael Jackson holding. <laughs> Blanket over <laughs> so people didn't know. I don't think people knew that that's not cool. What? <laughs> no, it's it's crazy. You should never, yeah, you should never just like grab a woman. Well, first Do of all, you think they came to that mall <laughs> and were like, yo, let's, let's throw a woman over you. The side. Okay, you have way more of an insight into a man's mind. I cannot I fathom, I, don't know. I cannot fathom, but maybe they came there looking for trouble. <laughs> Speaking of Ty. Oh, right. Yeah. Let's do it. How are we doing. going to replace the, the beautiful Brittany Murphy? I've, I must say, I felt really sad when I saw her like name in the credits yeah. at the beginning. Oh, you watched the whole movie and then you saw her name written and you were like, aw. <laughs> no. You didn't see her alive <laughs> performing? It's just something so. Her gift? Like, because, I don't know, she sort of like faded out. I feel like people don't remember. Uh. And when I saw her, I was like, oh my gosh, Brittany Murphy. Mm hmm. Who would have thought that she would die? Um, <laughs> Do you want to go? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I went with um, a British actress who I think is really phenomenal and also mm-hmm. sort of has the, I think, ability to have a Thai like transformation. Mm-hmm. And that's Olivia Cook from Bates Motel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you I'm should not watch that familiar. show. I'm not familiar. She definitely looks like Brittany Murphy. I really enjoy her as an actress which i think it was most of why i picked her because i think she's a lot of like spunk and sass Mm -hmm. but mostly i was like i can just see her going from like not to hot i can see her being the dopey new girl Mm -hmm. and becoming she's 24 just trying to see if i know anything else she's been in thoroughbreds katie says goodbye meet earl and the dying girl is she the dying girl yes still haven't seen it oh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sorry okay I well i haven't seen anything that she the signal wait that sounds familiar she's if you've seen her i feel like you would also be able to say that she has something special okay uh, okay but but i haven't so i won't okay well there it is so who did you pick i picked Maud apatow huh the eldest daughter of judd apatow okay and his beautiful wife whose name Escapes me at the moment. Le- Le- Leslie, Leslie Mann. Mann. You know why? I need to look at her face. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> because I uh, I was watching, mm. I pulled up like clips of her from This Is 40. Okay. And I thought she just like really dealt with like coming of age. And I thought that she, one, like being from like a comedy dynasty that she would be great. But she can pull off that that struggle of like, social awkwardness Mm -hmm. but because she's from la because she gets like what it's actually like to grow up here yeah that when ty goes to that moment where she is in with the popular crowd i think it would be like a no-brainer i was like why am i even listening to you to begin with you're a virgin who can't drive 
Oh, that was way harsh, Ty. I feel like we've stumped each other because I've never, I don't think I, I've seen Knocked Up, I've seen Funny People. And I, she was like children. I can't. In this. But yeah. Like, like in this I, is forty. She. I think she was like fifteen. I can't place 14. her. So. <clears throat> well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> I feel like we we're close on our share. And well, no, your your DN was was pretty spectacular. I have to say. Thank you. I like that choice. Thank you very much. Um. Ugh. Okay. Paul I'm... Rudd. I mean, just put him back in there. I had this <laughs> idea. I know we're not Playing casting this. Twenty two. I know we're not casting this role, but I thought Paul Rudd would be a fun choice to play. The teacher, um, not Mrs. Not Miss yes, Geist, but the yeah, the one that they set Miss Geist up with. Yeah, I completely agree, and I'm a huge fan of putting people who were in the original movie in the remake in some way. I think that's so much fun. Okay, pa- Josh, Josh, the lovable, affable. How old is Josh supposed to be? Because he's in college. He's also, in, <laughs> they just keep saying he's a college. He's guy. He's a college guy. He comes home and he starts playing music. And like Cher immediately dogs on him for his musical choices. Mm -hmm. He's listening to fucking Radiohead, one of like the greatest bands in the world. Yes. What is it about college and crybaby music? Hey, who's watching the Galleria? But he's like listening like he's uh, got fake plastic trees, and I'm just like, this is a good taste in music. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. just not Cher's taste in music. Okay, which who knows what she likes? She was definitely into like aqua when that came about right well it's hard to say because uh the music in clueless is uh pretty good but i i I can't tell like what genre is it just pop is it i think so because then like the mighty mighty boston shows up like halfway through and you're like oh are they ska kids well it was that time and then they go to the party in the valley and it's it's like all rap so i think she's more of like it was how it was how like in 10 things i hate about you like the main characters are like obsessed with ska bands right. and it doesn't make a lot of sense because that's not going to age well right. but it was the 90s i think Cher in the updated version is just like a morning becomes eclectic lady like she just puts it on mm. and whatever comes through is fine with her i don't know for sure what she's her got tastes some are. spotify playlists i don't know like what specific taste she has other than she likes like new stuff mm-hmm. whatever's popular. popular stuff yeah there you go yeah that's i who she picked is. josh hutchinson hutcherson excuse me why? Interesting. I don't know. This was a struggle. <laughs> was it because his name was Josh and you saw that and you just I think the PETA connected? aspect of the whole of his of his whole lovable Are you a Hunger Games fan? Are I'm you... not a fan, but I'm definitely Team PETA. Are you a Hunger Games? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is this a safe space? Can you talk about it? I read the first it? book. I did read the oh, first book. Oh, oh. Okay. I didn't I don't read, so Oh, neither do I. <laughs> I finished it and I was like, what was that? I looked at it. I was like, "What did I read?" This? I only knew ten words this whole book. Did I read all these words. What was I doing? Uh, I picked Josh Hutcherson. I don't Fascinating. hate it, but I could. I had two names on this list, and I don't even know who the second guy is. Um, and I'm. I guess I'm not up to date on young. Wait, kind of funny. You picked. Another, I wrote two guys, but you didn't know who the second guy was. I mean, I I wrote this, you know, a while ago. I mean, I'm like, I have to Google search who this guy is. What's his name? Oh, yeah, okay. He might have been okay. He might have been a... a mm. Am I not allowed to know? No. Oh. I said my pick. I went with it. Wow. I do think he embodies the vibe that mid-90s college guy Josh embodies. And that he just seems like a regular guy going to college. Yeah, he's Like, very we just pl- don't yeah. know that much about Josh. He's very plaid. But... I oh, think he hates his mom. Or he has like issues with issues, his mom. Yeah. He's closer with his stepdad. ex stepdad, which is an entirely other conversation. This familial relationship. <laughs> Do I, you think it's weird? Do you think it's weird that they get together? Or are you like I'm like, yeah, whatever. They're not related at all. I feel like they I were have brought to... together under extreme weird gross circumstances. But it's not like a legal I have to put myself in the situation and think <clears throat> if my parents were divorced and my dad married somebody else and this slightly older guy was my brother and then like i just have to think through it as if it was some other guy that maybe i had some sort of relationship with and i don't think i i don't think i could i think it's a little weird but under the umbrella of this like romantic Mm -hmm. comedy sure i'm fine with it great 
But I think this is a question. <laughs> I think this is a question we should all ask ourselves at some point in our lives. If Paul, if my parents divorced and my dad <laughs> married go. a woman whose son was Paul Rudd, <laughs> I'd be like, we should date. <laughs> Like, maybe I'm confused. I'm not confused. I'll break up with my girlfriend right now <laughs> to date Paul Rudd. Does she know this? She knows. We need to talk later off mic, too, about sure. who the other four people are that you would switch lives with. Because that's an interesting I, list of yeah. people to have. It, it changed recently because one of one of them got into some hot water recently. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Ugh. Okay. Let's so close it out. I picked... Okay, so I picked... Well, first of all, who are we... Ta- oh, we're still doing... We're on your Josh. Yeah. Jesus. Tri- Brian... Um, so I feel like I had to th- rethink my idea of like a 2018 college guy because I went to college in the South and I feel like I have a very different definition of what an average mm-hmm. college guy is, mm-hmm. but somebody that as soon as he entered my mind, I couldn't stop thinking about him because I loved him in Ingrid Goes West. O'Shea Jackson Jr. Oh yeah. Ice Cube Jr. Ice Cube 2. Ice Cube Dose. He's got a certain quality. And I think he could definitely do just a different version of Josh. Like, he obviously wouldn't be, like, semi-grunge. Right. Because that's just not as... It's not who he is. I'm going to say, I like most of your picks. I think I like my Dion. Not my Dion. <clears throat> my tie a little better. Well, yeah, that's because you don't know my tie. My tie? My tie? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. We're cooking now. Okay, uh, no, okay. I li- I, yeah, I like... I, I'm down with it. I'm down with it. Ingrid, he was really good in Ingrid Goes West. I love that whole thing about how he's like, he, he's just like a Batman freak. Yeah. It's good to just have a passion. You know what I mean? That's a great like character and he moment. Was like, he was like writing his own Batman movie, which I think is heroic. <laughs> Everybody should give it a shot. Right. Just write your own. Write your own Like I'm not going to say movie. what Ken and I do in the industry, but as industry <laughs> people. <laughs> this is so. I, I, I applaud him. For real. Yeah, no, he's he is heroic. All right, let's close this out then. Okay, what's what's Mel his... Horowitz? Mel Horowitz. Will you tell me what the hell this is? Um, a second notice for three outstanding tickets. I don't remember getting a first notice. The ticket is the first notice. I didn't even know you can get tickets without a license. Cher's Horowitz. father, the the lovable but also acerbic lawyer, like mm-hmm. super lawyer, mm-hmm. right? Whatever he's doing, that's a device I really enjoyed in was this movie. Was he a movie. criminal lawyer or like an like what, an agent? Yeah, what case is he working on? It felt like he was like a like a malpractice lawyer or something. Because like it's just stacks and stacks of paper on their dining room table, and that's supposed to translate to important lawyer. And I really enjoy that as a. Also, can you imagine being like a late twenties paralegal in your boss's house while his daughter and his stepson flirted in front of you while you highlighted case accounts? Yeah, like we're supposed to think this guy. <laughs> I'd be like, I- I'm leaving. <laughs> like we're supposed to see that guy as like a like a villain. Oh no! Like he he's was being one hundred percent. And I'm right. like, yeah, no. They should have just gone the distance and been like, I quit. I'm not. I'm not suited for this. I'm you should have looked else. Paul Rudd in the eye and said, "You should really think about what you're doing." <laughs> yeah. You go first. Okay. I I love my choice because I think this man is mostly curmudgeonly, mm. but he has comedy <clears throat> flowing through his veins. Are we going to pick the same guy? I, I really Probably don't know. Probably not. It's like one in six billion that we <laughs> cast the same actor. I'm just obsessed with the idea of him in comedies because he is very clearly like his agent is like, that's not who you are. Michael Shannon. Oh, yeah. I like it. I just want to see... I I want to see him be free. I want to see him be funny. Did you see him in They Came Together? He makes a cameo in They Came Together. It's hilarious. Oh, gosh, I wish I remembered more of He's They at, Came it's Together. Like, it's at the very end where Paul Rudd uh, chases after Amy, Ow. Amy Poehler. <laughs> uh-huh. And like all her ex-boyfriends keep coming back. Hmm. And Michael Shannon plays one of her exes. I'll just say he charges in with a katana. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's great. Check He's it out. so great. Everyone out there, if you He's haven't seen so it, check great. it out. I like it. He's a national treasure, <clears throat> and I just, I, I want the best for him. Well, speaking of They Came Together, I picked an actor who's also in that movie. I picked Law & Order SVU's very own Christopher <gasps> Maloney. Oh, that's a really good idea. I know. Okay. That's why well, I did it. Okay, well. To varying degrees, maybe he's more comedic than Michael Shannon and less intense. But yeah. he's very intense. I mean, watch any yeah. SUV episode. SVU. 
SUV. Yeah, SVU. <laughs> Take a look at any sports utility vehicle, and you will know. You'll know. Yeah, Christopher Maloney. I mean, him in Wet Hot American Summer is as uh, Gene is so phenomenal. Yeah, he's yeah he's really fantastic. All right, that's it. We did How'd it. How do you think you did? I liked. I like. I really liked yours. You were more. Prog- I'm going to take some hits probably on not being as progressive and switching it up. I kind of went down the road, down familiar road. I think a though bit. it's going to take <clears throat> us some time to realize that we can take ownership of it because mm-hmm. it's so easy to be like she has to be Alicia Silverstone, and you know, you'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. You'll. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's now time for who is Barry Pepper. <laughs> We should get a song. Maybe we there'll should. be a song. We don't know. <laughs> It'll go right <laughs> here. Here. <laughs> Who'd you pick for the? Uh... Okay, I. Oh, sorry for the. I mean, this is a new podcast. I should explain oh, these that's things. That's right. People Barry go, Pepper. People are inside our brain. The national treasure. Yeah. Of thespians and and yeah. audiences alike. Barry Pepper. You know him. You might not think you know you him. You know him. He's in everything. You know him. Kenan and I will pick a character from the movie Clueless. And we're going to find a role for Barry Pepper. That's basically what this is. So as opposed to... By the way, we're not being paid by Barry Pepper. We don't know Barry Pepper. We don't work for these agents. Not yet. But call us. Um, Who'd you pick? I I think Barry Pepper would make a great cameo as the driving instructor. Give it up. Did you do the same one? Yeah, the DMV driver. (laughs) I wrote him down as DMV Messiah because that's what she calls him. Girly, as far as you're concerned, I'm the messiah of the DMV. It's such a great, it's such a, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite scenes yeah. in the whole movie. I think, I think Barry Pepper should, should be so lucky <laughs> to get dropped in to share. I think we should be so lucky to have him. Yeah, again, Barry Pepper. All right. Yes. Well, that's it. That was Clueless. Thank you for joining us on The Boot. We did it. We did it. Did you hang in there? It was great. Kenna, how can people find you online or in the world? You can find us, this podcast, at The Boot Podcast on Twitter and at Boot Podcast on Instagram. Wonderful. There might be some stuff up there. What if they're like, Kenna, we don't want, we love you. We don't want to talk to Brian. We we want to talk I smack. Say, we hate his choices. I would say send me all your complaints about him. I love to uh, talk crap about people. <laughs> Please send it my way. You can find me at Ken and Trent, all one word, on Twitter and Instagram. Great. I'm at Flynn B on Twitter. Uh, please follow us. Please subscribe. Thanks for joining us. And we'll be back with more movie reboots uh, next time. Woohoo! you to walk in the store in 20 minutes. Well, um, it might take longer than that, Dad. Everywhere in L.A. takes 20 minutes. <laughs>